Wallahi thumma wallahi. And I never say this. I had some of, of, of the scholars asking me about the end of times. Because every scholar has his own expertise, right? So we scholars, we ask people about certain things. One of the things that I think I'm strong at is the signs of the end of times. And that's why I never said this is the end of times, Dajjal is almost there, this and that. But I had some of my scholars asking me, do you think this is the moment? Wallahi, it's the moment. And the moment can take 100 years or less. What we are seeing now, you are in the midst of the fitna. You are in the midst of what the Prophet ﷺ said would happen. You are in it, but you just don't see it. Wallahi, this is the beginning of beginnings and the end of the beginning. Wallahi, I swear to Allah Jalla wa'ala, I'm not saying that Jal is there. I'm not saying the Mahdi is there. I'm not saying it will happen tomorrow. But the, the end of times, they gradually grow. What you are seeing now, now, this is what is happening now, there and then. Now, it's the beginning, wallahi thumma wallahi, of the end of times that was mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad How long that will be extended for, nobody knows. Walakinnaha aqbalat. It is there now. Masks have fallen. Sides have been chosen and taken. Positions have been taken. And the atrocities, the vulgarity, the enmity was never as clearly expressed as it is today. The absence of mercy, the absence of even, or the, the, of integrity, the absence of human values are gone. At least within the political realm, they're gone. Humans that live under their reign, um, under these authorities, they still have a lot of humanity. Also, world watchers and organizations, they have spoken their minds. The UN have spoken their minds. UNICEF has spoken their minds. Many organizations. But it's ob obvious that the rupture between the people and what they want, mm -hmm. and the politi 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 uh, uh, politicians and what they do has never been as, as big as today, as severe as today. Yani, politicians should execute what the people want because they have been chosen by the people. And the people have not been listened to. So you know that when you choose, you choose for nothing. Politicians should be an extension in a de democratic world of the people. If millions of people demand a ceasefire, not hatred. They're not demanding for Israel not to exist. They're demanding for peace. They're saying stop killing because too many children and women are being killed. According to Israel, 86%, that's according to Israel, 80%, 86% of the victims are civilians. Now that's, let us say, 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. That is what they say, not what I say. So these people are dignified people that walk down the streets and tell their politicians, please, give us just a ceasefire. We're not asking for something special. We're asking, please, bring some medicine to these people. Legs are being amp amputated and, and, and arms. And operations are being performed without, any, without even a painkiller. We're not even talking about necessity. No, painkillers. Without that, that's what we're asking. We're not asking give them gold. We're not asking give them silver. We're just saying give them back some electricity and water. Allow them, give them time to bury their dead, to mourn them, to grieve them, to heal the wounded. Nothing. And then there is that bias within now, the world of broadcasters that is so ugly. It's despicable the way that they speak. We speak of hostages, prisoners, remember? Of children and, 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 and adults under 18. Or boys under 18. Girls under 18. But we speak. So even that they are not saying. So that means there is something bigger going on. One of the things everybody knows, there is a very big gas bubble under Gaza. They already were signing contracts in 2000. These are not conspiracy theories, these are truths. They are happening as we speak. They, had, they want a new channel where they, they're defining it now. They're bombarding it and then they will have their own channel so that everything that comes in, all the taxes and everything will be paid to them. And other people have to suffer because people care more about money than about lives. That's the way it works. So these things that are happening, a lot of them, and I don't have time to explain everything, 
Yani, wallahi, they are the signs of the end of times. Everything what you see now, you are living in the signs. So wake up. Grow up. There is no time now to sleep. Wallahi, there is no time to sleep. There is no time to waste. There is no time to... to if, you, if you are not investing, invested in making this world a better world, either through yourself or taking people... Or, or taking people on a journey where they, yani, where they will contribute to the betterment of the world and the people living in the world, regardless of their faith, then you have to start now. Yani, the bird is already flying, it's very difficult to catch it now, but if you're not a part of it, wallahi, then you're a loser. Wallahi, then you're a loser. If you do not contribute now, and that can be at a very, very low level, I'm not telling you to change the world, change yourself to start with. Let me change myself, my behavior, my, my connection with Allah, be an inspiration to people, to the people around me, be an inspiration to teach people, take them by the hand, even what our friend is doing, yani, uh, taking the children to the scouts, that's a very beautiful thing, teach them things, because the leaders will only be as good as their morals, their standards and their values. So if you grow up where you have not, have not been taught what it means to want to become a politician, to serve the people, you will serve yourself and your friends. So what we are seeing now is the wrong people. Why? Because they have not been educated morally. They have no spirituality. They have no human values. Otherwise, you're not like that. Regardless. Like, if this would happen to non-Muslims, we would say the same thing. I hope we would. If that would happen to non-Palestinians, we should speak our minds as well. We, we have no bias in our thinking. That is when you're a human being, you look at facts. You don't look at what your ideology is telling you. Yeah, we can allow this, we can't allow that. Two standards, Ukrainians yani, were killed, everybody stands up. People can go and just help them. Take up your gun and help the Ukrainians, they say. But if now you just say a word on behalf of the Palestinians, not saying go there and fight, nobody's saying that. Just speaking cease fire and from the river to the sea is already problematic. More problematic than the thousands of children that have died. Died, they say. Killed. That's another word they use. They were killed, but they died. Is that dying? Another 120 people died. How did they die? In their sleep. They were killed. They were massacred. So if you're going to have a look at it, yani these are the end of times, where the Prophet ﷺ said, the lie will be believed. Mm. And the truth will be denied. Scales will be corrupted. And look at this one. Via Hudayfa. And this is Lahu Hukmur Rafa. And there will come a time where the Muslims, listen to this one, cannot drink water without the permission of the one that rules them. This was said like 1400 years ago. There will come a time where the Muslim can no longer drink water without the permission of the one that rules him. Look, Gaza, chip, no water. And everybody thinks this is okay. This is collective punishment. Everybody knows this. To get a few guys in, in, a, in, in a space, nah, you're going to cut water, cut food, cut everything. Why should these people suffer? Oh, because they all, they are all agree with what the other ones have done. Who told you? So collective punishment, normal. No, and the Prophet said, look, and then blood will flow, flow through the streets and everybody in the world will see it. The scholars before, they didn't know how to explain this. Like, how can everybody see it? Only those who are close to it can see it. So how is that even possible? Everybody now has seen it. And they will not change it. Now, like, everybody in the world sees it. Everybody. There is not a house where the blood of the victims has not been shown. But nobody, nobody seems to care. I mean, from those who can change something. Those who can change something. It's very obvious now. You have to look, watch the interview that I spoke about yesterday. Um, what was the name again? Do you remember? Mass Assassination Factory. Go to the democracy now. Go, look. And look at the interview with a, a, a courageous Jewish journalist, a journalist in, in Jerusalem. 
He spoke to the intelligence service of Israel and the army and so forth. And he was allowed to share what he shared. Because that is, that is, that is even the most horrifying thing. They can now say things that clearly make it a genocide. They say it, they speak it. Outwardly, it's out there. And they just don't care. Because they know that nobody will change anything. And then they silence people who speak the truth. That's also one of the signs of the end of times. Because words are strong. Do you know what the problem is now? People become afraid to speak. And when you become afraid to speak, you make it dangerous for others to speak. But if millions of people speak, it's like one voice. But now the voices are going back. Mm -mm, I'm afraid. Habibi, what are you saying? Are you calling to violence? You're not. Are you calling to hatred? You're not. Are you calling towards anti-Semitism? You're not. The, the proof that it is a lie is when you go to these marches, the Jews are walking with us. With their flags. Do you see any Muslim being aggressive towards it? No, they just walk all together. They don't have a problem. Muslims, wallahi, don't have problems with Jews. They have problems with people in Israel who are not even allowed to have a DNA test. Because they would find out that many of them... Do you know the Arabs are Semites? How can you be an anti... That means that you're also against, you're also against Arabs then. But a lot of th these people come from Ukraine, from Poland, from Morocco. Poland, Russia, Belarus, Romania, the ones that are in charge there, Canada. So how, how Semite are you, oh you who are in power? So it has nothing to do with this. And that's the first thing I said, remember that video? First, they will tell you that being anti-Zionist is being anti-Semitic. And that's not true. At all. So now to come back. This is the end of times. Where the Prophet ﷺ said, when the hour is near, people will have intercourse in public. Oh, you say, where is that? Internet. That, that, it's even more public than the street. It's, it's more public than the street, isn't it? The street, how many people see you? 100? On internet, how many see you? Millions. Huh? So that is there, isn't it? Then he said, right at the end of times, and mixed with it, al-mughala, is when the, the, the prices will soar. Do we say soar? When the prices will soar. That everything will be so expensive. So this is where we are. It, is, it has never been this expensive, almost. It's, it's, it's terrible. You go to Aldi, if you go to Aldi, or I don't know where you go, co-op, apparently they don't invest in settlements and they don't buy from them. So if you just have one, yani one thing, you used to go for 25 pounds, now if it's full, it's like 7,500 pounds or more. It, everything became expensive. Like a coffee. Three years ago, it was like 2.10, 1.80. Now in some places, a coffee in London, 4, point, 4 pounds 10. For a coffee. I buy a bag with that. So everything. I, I remember I had, I had my little uh, croissant with, with jam. I had it for 165. Now it is 2.50. So everything is soaring now. That's one of the end of times. The Prophet said, one of the end of times is that time will go very fast. At the end of times, he said, the economy will be a global economy. Now, this is the, 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 the finances are one now. And soon you, you will have no cash, Habibi. Soon there is no, there is no money anymore. You, you are owned entirely. You go to a shop and say, can I pay? Oh, no cash. We don't accept cash. Why? Why? It's safer, they say. They will always use safety. Because when you fear, as a human being, for your safety, you're ready to give up on many things. Just look at COVID. You, you were ready to give up on everything. Even on your, of your, your freedom of traveling and, and dis, uh, displacement, yani your, your freedom of movement, that is one of the human rights, you know that? Freedom of movement, that was taken away. So everything is happening. When the Prophet ﷺ said right before the end of times, borders will be closed and people will not be able to travel. What are you going to do with all of this? And then people say, yeah, but that's coincidence. <laughs> God, everything is coincidence. That is coincidence. It's not coincidence. So we don't know how long it will take, but you are now in the end of times. I'm telling you. How long that will take, I don't know. Maybe you will see it, you won't. But it will not become easier. 
said the Prophet in Bukhari. There is not a year, or the year that follows will be worse than the year, year, year that preceded it. So it will only become worse, it will not become better. The Prophet ﷺ, and then the fitan will come. يعني إن عافية أول هذه الأمة نعم إن العافية عافية في أول هذه الأمة the عافية يعني being spared from these trials and so forth is for the first of my أمة ويصيب آخرها بلاء وفتن and the last generations of this أمة will be touched by afflictions and trials he said فتجيء الفتنة Yani, and the fitan, the fitna will come. And then he said, يُرَقِّقُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا Every fitna that comes will make seem that the fitna that preceded it was nothing. فَتَجِيءُ فَيَقُولُ هَذِهِ, هذه مُهْلِكَتِي Then it comes and he says, oh, this is the fitna that will, the fitna that will destroy me. فَتَنْكَشِفْ But then it goes away. فَتَجِيءُ And then another fitna comes. He said, هَذِهِ هَذِهِ This is what will destroy me. And kashif and goes away. Then he said, Hadi, Hadi, he said it again, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Fatan kashif, and then it will disappear. And then he said, If you would like the hour to take place uh, and be spared yani from this fitan, that Falyuk min billahi wal yawmi al akhir wal yati ila nasi ma yuhibu and yu'tabihi ilayhi. He said that he makes firm and strong. He's believed in the last day and that he treats people the way he wants to be treated. Each fitna, even what you're seeing now, in a year, this is nothing. So every fitna will make appear the previous fitna like it was nothing. And every time you will say, this is my disaster, this is my destroyer, this is my end. That's, that, that's what the Prophet وسلم, said. He said, fitan ka Yani it is like like a very dark night, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yusbihu rajulu fiha fihi mu'mina wa yumsi kafira. He wakes up as a mu'min, goes to bed as a kafir. He wa- he goes to bed as a mu'min, wakes up as a kafir. Yabi udinahu yaradim min dunya. He sells his deen for a worldly share. What does that mean? It means you're gonna give up on your values, you're gonna give up on your moral standards because you're afraid to speak. You're afraid to be. They want assimilation. They don't want integration. And even when you speak of assimilation, for those with a non-European look, it's still not good enough. Your name will have to change. And you will have to indulge more in things that are haram than they do to prove that you are, that you have changed. So how are you going to stay strong? said the Prophet that you will be in the end of times like somebody holding on to a charcoal. How are you going to be? But there will be people that remain strong. And that's where the Prophet said, من أحيا سنتي عند فساد أمتي فله أجر شهيد the one that revives my sunnah, yani my way of life, my thinking, the Islam, the deen. Not just sunnah, like some people would understand it, the deen. The one who revives the deen in times of corruption has the ajr of a shaheed, has the ajr of a martyr. And then the Prophet ﷺ said in another riwayah, he said he will have the ajr of 50 people. They said, Akhamsuna minna ya Rasulullah, or it's 80 the ajr of 50 of our likes, Ya Rasulullah, or of their likes, instead of your likes. He will have the ajr of 50 sahaba. Radiallahu anhu. So if you, if you look at these things, they're not easy. So that's why if you live in times of fitan, there are three things that you need to hold on to always. The Prophet sallallahu was asked by the sahabi radiallahu anhu, what do you advise us then, Ya Rasulullah, in these times? He said, "Ilzam baytak, ilzam baytak." Yani, remain in your house. Wa amsik alayk lisanak, and keep your mouth closed. Wa bki ala khatiyatik, and weep over your mistakes and faults and flaws. Three things. Wa iyaka, and watch out. 
and do not speak about public matters and affairs. Because wallahi, even the news that we get is but a portion of what is happening. So judging is very difficult in these times. Because we judge through one lens. <coughs> the news broadcasting, if it wouldn't have been for, for people in Palestine sharing with us, we wouldn't have known. If we wouldn't have had these courageous journalists of whom more than 60 have been killed, we would have thought that nothing was happening. Look at the news, nothing is happening. I listen nothing. So, he said, stay in your house. What does it mean, stay in your house? It means also, don't look at fitan. Don't look at fitan. Because today, it's very easy to have fitna in your house. Images that you shouldn't be having, words that you hear in your house that you could have prevented from being heard. So, stay in your house literally means, yani, only leave your house when necessary. When you go to a class, when you go to your job, uh, you want to work out, you go to the park with your children, you want to do some groceries, you want to shop. But apart from that, don't stay outside. And then he said, keep your mouth closed, and he don't talk. In times of fitna, the only ones who have to talk are experts. Experts, ulama, in their field, whatever that field may be. And then he said, وَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِيئَتِكَ And weep over your mistakes. Why? Because when it's Akhir zaman you can, be, you can die at any given time. And soon, when the fitna becomes yani, more severe, you will have no time to repent anymore because the only thing that you will be doing is mourning your dead and saving your skin. And then, yeah, you don't have time to repent. Wallahi, we're still in a ni'mah. Wallahi, big ni'mah. We can still repent. We don't have to mourn our dead all the time and we don't have to save our skin. At least not here, literally. So that's why he said, وَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِيَتِكَ يعني It means repent. إِبْكِ عَلَى ذَنْبِكَ طُولَ الدَّهْرِ مُجْتَهِدًا إِنَّ الْبُكَاءَ مُعَوِّلُ الْأَحْزَانِ لَا تَنْسَ ذَنْبَكَ بِالنَّهَارِ وَطُولِهِ إِنَّ ذُنُوبَ تُحِيطُ بِالْإِنسَانِ So you, you, you repent. You repent, you repent. And that are the three things. And then he said, don't speak about public matters and affairs. Because your judgment may be wrong. Because you don't have all the information you need to have a correct judgment. I mean, then you speak very quickly, but based on what? Based on what? Even the things that are being said have shown to be untrue, or partially true, partially untrue. So how are you even going to form a judgment based on misinformation? People ask you to, to give an opinion about something, but how, how can I give an opinion about something that keeps on changing? So even that, how are you going to do this? So that are the things, and that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Fitanul Mar, the fitna of a person, fi waladihi, wa malihi, wa nafsihi, and he will take place in his possessions, in his family, in his wealth, to kafiruha, that what takes it away, this fitan, yani as salatu, wa sawmu, wa sadaqatu, wa al amru bil ma'rufi, wa nahyu, wa fi riwaya, wa nahyu anil munkar. Yani when you are tested in these things, yani when you are trialed in the end of times, then there are things that expiate it, that drive it away, <coughs> that make it melt like snow for the burning sun. And that is salah, sawm, sadaqa, and yani recommending good and preventing evil, in word and in deed. So these things, they safeguard you. Um, they are your lifeline in times of fitan. So one should, when fitan arise, increase in these things. He should, or she should, increase in doing these four matters. Also dua, ikhlas, and salah. Salah, ikhlas, and dua. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا يَنْصُرُ اللَّهُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ بِضَعِفِهَا بِإِخْلَاسِهَا وَالصَّلَاتِهَا وَدُعَائِهَا أو دعائها وصلاتها. Allah will... Yani, give, give victory to this ummah through her weaker yani, shackles through the weak by means of their ikhlas, their dua and their salah so these are yani, your strongholds in times of fitna salah, sadaqah, sawm amr bil ma'roof, nahi anil munkar ikhlas and dua they are usus and najati min al fitan. They are the pillars of escaping the fitan.
They are the pillars of changing a situation. And then also the absence of the love for money. The Prophet ﷺ said, صَلَاحُ أَوَّلِ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ بِزُهْدِ وَالْيَقِينِ وَهَلَاكُ آخِرِهَا بِالْبُخْلِ وَالْأَمَلِ He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the prosperity of the first generation of this ummah was thanks to her zuhd and yaqeen, abstention of the dunya and her certitude of Allah's promise. And the reason why the last of my ummah will be destroyed is their bukhl, their stinginess, and their amal, thinking that they will live a long life. So that means that we have to adorn ourselves with the first two, yaqeen and zuhd, and that we have to fight the two latter, and that were what? That was uh, bukhl, bukhl, stinginess, so becoming generous, and tulul amal, we exchange it for knowing that we can die any given moment. So that gives us four. If we want to survive, then we need to have yaqeen, then we need to have, what was the second? Zuhd. We need to have karam, generosity. And we need to have qisarul uh, amal. Yani, the certitude that we can die any given moment. When you have these four, you live a good life. So, as you see, the the mafatihu and nasr, wa najati min al-fitan, the keys to saving yourself from the fitan, have been given by the Prophet Muhammad alayhi, As-salatu was salam. So these are, yani how many do we have now? We have four, five, six, uh, and then, how many do we have? Hmm. Ten? Yeah, read them. What are the ten? So salah, psalm, sadqa, recommending good and forbidding evil, ikhlas, dua, yaqeen, zuhud, generosities, and certitude. Yes, mashallah. So do you see, our Prophet ﷺ gave us everything. Like everything you need. The problem is now, knowing and not doing is foolishness. So if you know, you do. So these t- ten things should now be in a part, an integral part of your life. Because they will not only save you, or safeguard you, or protect you, but also the ones you love. No. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا Ordain, command your family to pray and be yani, and uh, practice patience therein. We will not ask you risk. What does it even mean? It means that when you occupy yourself in doing Amr bil Maruf and Nahi al Munkar and praying together with your family, we will take care of your rizqi problems. So, yani, this is why when you, when you turn your house as good as you can into a place of worship, then Allah will turn your house into a blessed house where risk keeps on coming and seeping through like water into your life from where you least expect it. And if you fear Allah, then Allah will give you a way out and provide you from where you do not expect your risk to come from. So all of these things, barakallahu feekum, protect you. So now we see other people's door being knocked. One day your door will be knocked, yani by the fitan. So don't just be an observer, but also uh, an active participant. Now I'm not just observing the fitan, oh, fitna, fitna. Before you know, the fitna is right in front of your door. And what will you do then? You know, the people in Palestine, they were educated spiritually, and they're very strong. So even the children, when it happened, they're traumatized. But they knew it was coming. Um, so, and they have a way of thinking. Even when they're traumatized, they have a way of thinking. We don't have a way of thinking. Because we observe fitan, but we were never really trialed at a collective level. We are trialed at an individual one, but here we are. Apparently we, we survived. So if you do not have the ingredients for that survival dish, نعم, then you will have nothing to eat. So you, you need you need these ingredients to turn your life into, um, yani, into a safe zone. And if you don't have these ingredients, you will not. It's impossible. So that's why listen to your Prophet Ali Salam and take these keys to open the door to um, safety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.